and I'm going to give a little bit of an introduction here. Uh, Joanna is a talent manager who, on behalf of her clients, has closed over $3.5 million of brand deals, partnerships, and speaking engagements. That's incredible. Uh, her clients have partnered with brands like Kroger, Walmart, AARP, Little Northern Bakehouse, H&R Block, and Aldi. Prior to her work in the talent management space, Joanna worked on the presidential campaigns of Hillary Clinton and John Kerry for more than seven years. Uh, Joanna is a world traveler, lived in Spain three times, and can often be found cycling Colorado's mountain ranges. That is incredible. So Joanna, you are up. I'm going to drop your links and stop my screen. Take it away. Perfect. Hi, everybody. I am thrilled to be in a community of travelers because I too am one of all of you as a, uh, thank you, Annie, by the way, for that light, love, lovely uh, intro and let's get me up here. Okay. So super psyched to be here. Got a lot of stuff to talk about and whether you are starting your journey, you're doing trade, you're thinking about this, you're getting paid. You're starting another project down the road that maybe this is relevant for. I promise you there are like, you will have some nuggets of wisdom today that you'll be able to take away and apply to your life and business. So, uh, so much to say, I'm going to give a quick, um, Annie, before I, we got on this call, Annie and I were just chatting. She's like, how'd you start this? Like, cause everyone always asks me like, how'd you get into this? Like talent management influencers. Um, I very much feel like I end up being the person who always talks to the party. Cause people are like, wait, they're just so curious. Like, how does this all work? Um, so the quick and dirty version about how I started my talent management agency, I have been working for myself for 12 years. I actually launched my entrepreneurial career when I was living in Barcelona, which was my third time living in Spain because I had been traveling a ton. Um, I had previously done a backpacking trip around the world for a year um, with a decently small size backpack, one of my proudest accomplishments so far. And, you know, I was like ready to use my brain and contribute to the greater good of society. And let's be honest, like earn some money because everything was going that way and I needed to come back in. So I launched my entrepreneurial journey as a nutrition coach. Like every good entrepreneur, I had a couple pivots. I then moved into operations and uh, strategy and logistics, and I became um, like an outsourced COO, a chief operating officer for some different small businesses, mostly online solopreneurs. And when I was doing that, um, I had this offering of a day and a half, or I think maybe a two and a half day strategy session, strategy session intensive, which was anyone who was sort of like, I'm stuck in my business. I need some help. I need another set of eyes and ears. Like I need outside object, you know, perspectives. So I would just come in and, and look and be like, okay. And, and come up with a plan of like, here's how to move forward, delegate, automate, like here's how to refocus. And one of the women who hired me for that is an influencer. This was actually five years ago. I posted about it on my social media this morning and I had never heard of an influencer um, which is wild, right? I feel like now you can't swing a cat and like not hit an influencer or a content creator of some kind. And uh, we got along like a house on fire. And when I left, she asked me to be her manager. I had moonlighted at her as her manager when I was down there with her. She had a couple brand things come in and she was like, do this, like you deal with them, right? Because like the thing I always hear is people don't like the negotiation part. They don't like asking for money. And so I was like, oh, okay, you know, do, 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 like, we just did your rates. Let me just literally like pull this all together. I asked for way more money than she would have. And both times they said yes, without even blinking an eye. And she, it made me look amazing. She was like, oh my God, how'd you do that? That was magic. Will you be my business manager? And I said, yes, because honestly, I had no idea what I was getting into, but I knew that I could always count on myself. I was like, I can figure it out. I love trying new stuff. And at the end of the day, we just got along so well that my intuition and my instinct was just like, say yes to her. Like, this is going to work out. You don't know what it'll look like. And now all I do full time is have my talent management agency. So I currently represent eight absolutely amazing women that I am totally obsessed with. Um, two of whom are travel influencers, Gabby Beckford, who spoke at TravelCon. I love that I get to have this um, presentation right after white riding the wave of that amazing conference. She spoke at TravelCon. She was the one who did the viral TikTok thing. And then Jessica Serna of My Curly Adventures, who was there but didn't speak. 
along with six other women. They're all women of color, multi-generational, all different walks of life, all different backgrounds, representing food, travel, and the lifestyle space. All I do all day long is negotiate. Pitch um, on behalf of my clients, respond to inquiries, get agreements signed, and go back and forth with brands to make deals happen. I am like the only person who picks up their phone for unknown numbers, and I love it. Like this just makes me so excited. So today we're going to talk about how to negotiate with CVBs, Convention and Visitor Bureaus, DMOs, hotels, destinations. What I'm going to teach and talk about today, if you're doing this for trade or you're doing this for pay, they are skills and lessons and things and language and scripts and words that you can use whether you're, you know, it, you don't have to be doing this for pay to get some takeaways from today. And in fact, I would like to argue, there's a lot of things that I'm going to teach you that you can use just in your everyday life and vice versa. So that's um, a little bit about me. Also small world. I traveled backpacked around the world for a year, uh, summer of 2009 to summer of 2010, lived in Barcelona for a year. And then actually Matt, the nomadic Matt and I were on a travel panel in 2012 in Boston, like way before the nomadic network was even born. Um, and so, so such a fun small world that we're like back and like get to be here speaking to everybody today. So um, cool. I saw a couple of people in the chat mention that they are uh, doing this for um, gifting, for trade. Um, a couple of people, I think it made a mention that they're starting to do this for pay, which is great. I love that there's like, everybody can relate to this. So today we're going to talk about, just closing my chat. Okay. So today we are going to chat about why negotiation is super powerful. The six things that you need to have handy whenever you have a brand or a hotel or a DMO reach out to you. I'm going to give you some questions to ask some different things to say in scenarios in negotiation scenarios like literally some language and words and phrases and how to present yourself. Um, oh, hold on. How do I, I'm trying to go to the next slide and all of a sudden it's not working. Okay. Hold please. There we You're go. Fine. Okay. Very so good. weird. Uh, all right. So here's one of the reasons I love negotiation. And here's why, whether you are totally freaked out about the idea of it, I know people literally have like a visceral physical reaction to like the idea of asking for money or like, I'm worth this, pay me this amount for all these things that you're asking me to do. Um, it's not just about the money. And so this is why it's relevant if you're, um, doing trade partnerships or gifted collabs, things like that. It is not just about the money, but it's about the whole set of circumstances and everything, um, that is part of the project, right? We're going to talk about statement of work, deliverables, timing. Those are all different things that you can negotiate. A lot of times people think, oh, negotiation money, that's it. No, no, no. There's so many other, um, different things to, um, that are part of this. And for me, the biggest thing is really, it's about managing expectations, right? Of what you're giving, what you're getting, what they're giving, what they're getting. They being the, you know, hotel or destination that you're working with. Um, I can't, this is so funny. It's fine. We're travelers. We know yeah. how this works, right? Yeah. Sometimes, I mean, sometimes things do not go according yeah. to plan. That is strange. Okay, there great. We it's just being sassy today. Um, so of course, what would a presentation be without a good Oprah Winfrey inspirational quote? So you get in life what you have the courage to ask for. One of the things I want to make sure or that I would love to impart today is that the power of the ask, but just to start asking. You're never going to get what you want, be it move from getting paid or getting gifted opportunities and maybe doing things for trade for starting to get financial compensation for them. Like this is the end of the day, it's on you to start practicing. So I'm gonna give you a couple examples of like ways to flex your muscle down the road, but it literally is just like having, whether you got to channel your Sasha Fierce or whoever it is, you know, I've had people say, oh, they pretend to be like their VA when they respond to emails. Um, whether you set up a different email address and like you have your partner, your best friend, like respond on your behalf because they can hype you up better than you can hype yourself up. However you have it happen, 
just start making that ask. Yes, seamless transition. Um, so as I was saying, it's about the best possible experience for myself, um, or in this case for you know you as a content creator and the traveler and the brand or the agency, right? Because this is this has to be a win-win for both them and for you. You don't want to do a partnership where you're like, this is totally off brand. Like maybe you don't have kids, but it's some family resort that reached out and you're like, this would be super weird if I went like, you know, the content wouldn't land. It wouldn't be super successful. Like it's okay to say no and stuff, or just be like, Hey, maybe you have a sister resort that is for solo travelers, um, or, you know, a lifestyle that's more like catered to you. It is a confidence builder and you have to flex this muscle all the time. As Annie mentioned in the intro, I have closed now I think we're close to $4 million. Um, I want to close one and a quarter million dollars just this year on behalf of my clients. There are still times, and I've been doing this for years. There are still times when I'm like, oh, okay, I'm gonna send that email and like say a little prayer and like cross my fingers. And maybe I go for a little walk after I sent it because I need to just like step away from my computer. But most of the time I feel really good about it literally because I just keep flexing that muscle. And every day when I wake up, you kind of got to reset a little bit. You don't go back to zero, but it builds upon itself. And then it trickles into other areas of your life, which is really great. What I love about negotiation as well is learning stuff. So the set of questions that I'm going to um, share with you in just a couple slides is to me, like the biggest tool and where I think a lot of you're able to like build confidence because you are right. You're putting the ball back in the, their court, the people that you're talking to, and you're getting more information to understand the project and the scope. I will often have people reach out to me and they're like, Hey, this brand reached out. What do I tell them for the rate? And I'm like, well, what are you doing? Like, what's the, what, right? If you can't sink your teeth into that, if you don't know how they want to use your content, what they want from you, what are they offering? And that's what the set of questions is all about. It's also a great way to ease in a conversation and just have that chat. So when you get to the money part, it's like you've already started chatting versus they email you and you're like, that's $25,000. <laughs> and sometimes it even leads to better ideas because in those questions, you learn more. Maybe you learn like they're, you know, a new resort and they don't have a ton of photos. And you're like, hey, I'd be willing to swap some photos for you. Like, let me add that in. And now it's a huge value add for them. You're already going to be taking a million photos. Um, or maybe they're announcing a new, um, you know, hotel that's opening up in your area that they want to get eyeballs on. And they have a ton of travelers from your city. And you're like, oh, well, this is actually where I live. A lot of people, you know, on my Instagram, my followers, like, let's talk about that. It doesn't always come up in your first time of conversation, but just like asking some of these general questions leads to a lot of that information. To me, it's really just about managing those expectations and asking, diving into those questions. It means in negotiation, expanding beyond just the money. You don't want to scramble turning content, right? You don't want to do things like rush. You've got, especially in this space with travel people, you've got time zones and flights missed, and maybe you have Wi-Fi and maybe you don't. And there's experiences that take you off into the wilderness and you're you know, gone all day. And then you come back and you have a dinner. You don't get back to your room. You're gone from sun up to sundown and you're exhausted. So you need more time to turn in content. Um, it's also so that you don't drive down the highway and see your face on a billboard or you open up a travel brochure and there's your picture. And you're like, I didn't agree to that. And then you look back at the you know, agreement and you actually did because you just didn't negotiate or you didn't ask about it. Um, it's about exclusivity. So I've had, for my client, Jessica, I've had some opportunities where they've reached out and they're like, I mean, she can't work with any other hotels for three months. And it's like, well, she's a travel person. So like that's, you don't want to be locked into that, those sort of parameters. If they're going to compensate you very, very, very nicely, <laughs> that's something to consider. But you want to have those conversations to learn, like, well, what can I not do in having this partnership with you? And at the end of the day, it really just puts you in the driver's seat. Whether you are doing paid work now, you're doing trade and gifted work, or you're working towards it, you have a brand and you have a business and it is yours and you own it. And so these negotiations and conversations and questions help you decide, right? You want to run everything through that filter of like, 
okay, this is my business hat. Like, does this make sense for my business versus, oh my God, I'd love that like free cruise. Like that would be amazing. I recognize it's really easy for me to say that it is just a transaction. It's not personal. This is why a lot of people love having a manager, right? Cause they just like, you deal with it. Like it's not, if I say, oh, it's going to be $25,000, $2,000, $500. And they're like, oh, I'm sorry. We can't do that. Like, that's not our budget. I'm just like, okay, fine. What is your budget? I totally get that. You may be like a lot of people internalize and think, oh my God, they just said no to me. Like I'm not worth that 25,000 or that 500. That is not what they're saying. They're just saying they don't have the budget that you've asked for. So as you put on your Sasha Fierce persona and be this, you know, whoever you need to be, if you are struggling to be a negotiator or and like have these conversations, I encourage you to also somehow find some emotional wall. I don't know how to do it, but find some emotional wall where you can separate yourself and remember it is just a business transaction. They're not saying no to you as that worth. It's literally just a number and to not have an emotional attachment to it. Um, one of my favorite is, so I've mentioned a couple of times, just like flexing that muscle around negotiation. Uh, so a couple non-businessy, non-brand um, partnership, sort of high stakes scenarios that maybe get you extra stressful. Next time you're out at your favorite restaurant, you're visiting a new place, um, a friend just graduated from um, their master's program and you wanna celebrate, whatever, it doesn't matter. You're like, it's a Tuesday in May and it's not raining for the first time in three weeks, like whatever. And you're out at a restaurant, ask for a round of drinks. I'm constantly, and this is why I'm flexing my, I'm, I'm not always trying to get stuff free. Like it's not cause I'm cheap, but I just constantly flex this muscle. Right. So I'll be out at a bar. I got a friend in town and I'm like, Hey, my client's visiting. This is their first time in Denver. Any chance we can get around and drinks on the house. Something like that is flexing your muscle. Um, next time you are at a resort, you've already paid for it. This is all on you. It's a vacation. Um, you connect with the GM and you're like, Hey, is there any way we can get a food and beverage credit? or a free massage, and you can talk about what you do, just ask for it. Maybe you're gonna do it anyway, right? But you just ask, there's no, there's no high stakes there. Um, my favorite story is I had moved into the house um, in an apartment a couple of years ago, and it had two bedrooms, so I needed a new mattress. I walked in this big you know, mattress warehouse, right? There's like one old guy in the back in some like really bad office who was clearly bored and like hadn't seen anybody in days. He's thrilled when I walked in the door, and he was all trying to sell me all these mattresses and um, I'm walking around, like laying all the mattresses and I see one that I want. Let's say for argument's sake, it was like 600 bucks, right? So I'm laying there and he's talking, talking, talking. And I'm like, hey, so how about you give this to me for $200? Like I went so far into the extreme that I could just play it off as a joke. And he goes, well, I can't do 200, but I could do 400. And in that moment, I wasn't facing him. I purposely wasn't facing him. I literally was like laying down my hands up, looking away. And I thought, I'm just going to have fun with this. And he's like $400. And I'm like, oh, okay. You're opening negotiation. So we went back and forth and I got that mattress for so stinking cheap. And I almost got free, free delivery, but I needed it before they were able to deliver it. So I had to go pick it up. But flexing your muscle in those situations, that's where you can get really good at it your favorite store. You're like, Hey, I just bought $200 worth of stuff. Like any chance you can give me 20% off any chance I can have a coupon for next time I purchase something somewhere. Um, just like starting asking for those little baby things will help you build your muscle. Okay. So let's get to the meat and potatoes of talking about, um, negotiation. So things that have handy, you are reaching out to a brand or they've reached out to you or a CBB hotel. So here's what you need to know. Your currency your rates, your boundaries, media kit, examples of past partnerships, and spreadsheet. Yes, I know they're on the slide and I read it, but they're really important. So I just want to make sure they land with everybody. Okay, so what's your currency? Your currency is what you exchange to the CVB and hotel in exchange with a partnership, meaning your social media numbers and your web traffic. That is what you have to offer up to say, hey, here's what I can do for you. Here are the eyeballs that I can get on your brand and your business, your resort, your destination, your whatever, in exchange for what you're gonna give me. Now, if you were just starting, when you were just starting, you are not going to get paid. There's no ifs, ands, or buts about it. 
every single person, whether, you know, they're starting to now get paid $20,000 for a keynote. They went and practiced at the Rotary Club, the Lions Club to work out their speech and get it perfect. So when they deliver a $20,000 speech, it is on point. Same thing here. We all know that Instagram likes to hide things, especially now if it's a still photo and it's not a real, right? They're like the algorithm. Nobody likes the algorithm. Um, so if you, know, you have a thousand followers, we all know that not all those thousand people see your content, right? So this is why it is important to build up your following. But you can still, let's say you've um, you know, great web traffic. You can still, even if you don't have a strong social following or you're building it, you can still leverage. Maybe you get a ton of, you know, millions of views on your Pinterest stuff. Like there's lots of ways to work around, but that is your currency. Your rates are your rates. So these are dynamic. They are constantly changing. There is no way to figure out exactly like what they should be. Honestly, sometimes it is a matter of having a range, throwing it against the wall, so to speak, putting it out there and seeing what bites you get. Remembering it's always dynamic. And you're constantly just going to be playing and, and seeing like what sort of, um, you know, yeses you can get with your rates. Boundaries are, okay, I'd love to ask for $1,000 for an in-feed Instagram post, but I'm willing to do it for 500, but I'm going to ask for 1,000. So that's sort of the boundary of like, what's the lowest you'd be open to going. If you're doing gifted campaigns or for trade, okay, they send me a product. What am I willing to do? Like, what is my minimum? I'm willing to do a set of stories. Or like, I will do one in-feed post and I'm not going to do a reel and an, you know, an IGTV and a blog, like have those boundaries of essentially like, I don't want to say how low you'll go. That sounds sort of bad, but what that lower limit is. Media kit. Even if you have never done this for pay, have a media kit. You're professional. It is what presents and speaks. It is your digital calling card. So it allows you to be in the room when decisions are being made, talent is being presented, hotels are considering options of who they want to work with. If you don't have a media kit, it's going to be hard to compete because a lot of pretty much everyone else that everyone else that could be in that conversation that they're considering would and or will. And it is a professional, you know, it's a professional calling card. So it does set you apart if there are other people who don't have it. Um, it's an investment. It is totally worth the investment. There's ways to, you know, make one on Canva or just hire someone for a couple hundred dollars. And then again, you can just continue to change that. It's not a dynamic piece. Um, examples of past partnerships. So this is where you're able to show your portfolio. Doesn't matter I, if, if they're paid or not. It is your street cred to say other people have hired me. Other people have trusted and said yes to me. And then ideally you have links to them so you can show your work, or maybe you have an analytics, you know, report wrap up to show, Hey, here's what I did for the brand. Here's how many eyeballs I got on it. Here's how many impressions. Here's what my reach was for all my content. Again, paid or not, it doesn't matter. This is your portfolio. And then a spreadsheet. Why would I say a spreadsheet? Because you want to track every single inbound request that comes to you for a couple of reasons. One, you get organized, you know who to follow up on such and such a brand reaches out to you, you know, hotel reaches out to you in February for September. They're planning their September launch of a new pool. Um, and they want to, you know, do something and having, they're having a fun Labor Day party and you haven't heard back. If you don't have a spreadsheet or some way to track, you will literally not know you'll, you'll lose out on that opportunity. So you want to have a spreadsheet to track everything. It also helps you see the people that are reaching out to you. Are they agencies? So note to self, those are good people to build relationships with because they have other clients, especially if they do a lot of travel stuff. Like Giant Noise, for example, is an agency that does a ton of travel things. If you start having opportunities come in from Giant Noise, you want to like extra love up on them because there could be some other things happening. And it's also after time, like literally a year, two years, three years, it's great just to see trends. So for you to know, um, January, February, March. Wow. That's just like a really quiet time for my business. And maybe you're freaking out. Like I have clients that freak out and they're like, nothing's happened. I haven't had a new inquiry. You're like, I haven't signed an agreement. And I'll pull up the spreadsheet I have of them. And I'm like, yeah, March and April. So dead for you. I don't know what happens, but like everything tends to pick up in June and July. Like don't freak out. It's comforting to be able to just like anchor into that data and that information. Um, I'm just going to check my notes, make sure. Okay. So I alluded to this before a little bit about all the things that are on the table to negotiate. 
I mentioned it because most people just get stuck on like the money part. There's all these other things that you can negotiate um, and ask about. And it's kind of like a choose your own adventure, sort of like ping pong thing, right? The initial outreach is always around money. SOW is statement of work or scope of work that are, that's the deliverables that you're doing in exchange for what you're getting compensation or trade. And then you like agree on that. And then you talk about timing or exclusivity or usage. So know that it's a constant conversation of yeses and nos until you get to like the final yes, when everyone agrees to like what the things are. Okay. So let's talk about actual language. So in this scenario, a brand, an agency, a hotel, a CVB, a DMO has reached out to you. Annie, I'm going to use you as an example. And they're like, Hey, Annie, we love your work. We, um, so Annie just told me before this call that she's based in Utah. Um, we are opening a new hotel in LA. We'd love for you to come visit and do a blog post about us because we see that you have great blog content. That's all, you know, they didn't say anything else. Fantastic. You're, you're always positive. You're always appreciative and always optimistic and just like open, right? Open any questions of your friend. Great. Kick it right back to them. What's your budget for the scope of work? Maybe they reach out to Annie for trade or they reach out to her. Um, they're like, Hey, we want to send you some new, um, salt scrubs, some, some, you know, bath type items, right? Because maybe she runs like a lifestyle blog or travel packing cubes because you write a lot as like a solo traveler who like had a, you always pack in, you know, carry on, right? So they want to send you some things to use just in your carry on. We don't tell you anything about budget. Great. What's your budget for the scope of work? You do know what they want from you. So you're able to at least have that understanding and clarity. Maybe they write back um, in and, and, or sorry, they reach out to you. Um, oh, I'm just, I got the chat button over my notes here. So they, maybe they reach out to you or they respond and they're like, oh, we have a thousand dollars and your rate is 2,500 for the scope of work. Fantastic. I love this project. Sounds good. What an amazing opportunity. If you have a personal tie-in, use that personal tie. My rate for this scope of work is $2,500. What flexibility do you have for the budget? So here's where I say, don't give yes or no questions. Like, can you pay me 2,500? Or do you have 2,500 in the budget? Um, that's a yes or no question that can quickly become a dead end. And something to remember and think about is the person that you're dealing with quite possibly is not the final decision maker on budget. So you, you, if you're making it hard for this person, cause they then have to turn around and ask for you. If you're like, Hey, what's the flexibility? Like, what can you do? How can we, how can we make this possible? I have found in the past, they're much more willing to be in your corner, in your camp and argue for you and try and get you money. So they can come back and say, oh, well, okay. So let's say, let's, let's say for point number three, they're like, oh, we can do $2,000. They offered a thousand, you asked for 2,500. They're like, well, we can do $2,000. Or sometimes they'll say, can we meet in the middle? Fantastic. Thanks so much for finding the additional budget for this project. I'd love to revisit the scope of work to align best with my rates and the budget available. So maybe they ask for a blog into a, a, a set of stories in a reel. Would the brand be open to? And here's where you think, what is best for my brand? If you're like, this content is fantastic for evergreen. Like a, you do a little, you know, Google thing. And you're like, wow, a ton of people are searching for this information. I'd love to write an article and rank on the first page of Google. I want to do a blog because it's good for me. Conversely, maybe you're like, oh, it's not a ton of searches for like this random city in Nebraska, but this content, I'm pretty sure I could um, do really well on TikTok or Reels. And obviously no one knows if anything can go viral, but this is great visual content. So I'm actually going to propose for this scope of work. I'd love to do the Reel in a set of stories. Here's why, dot, dot, dot. I'm going to pause for one second and just realize and look at the chat because I haven't looked at that. Are we good? Any, any questions or like anything I should just know? We have questions, but I will say we've got a couple, but I've got them saved so we can hit those at the end. Okay, cool. Awesome. Um, perfect. So as you can see here, I ask questions, which puts it back in their corner. 
back in their core. Um, let's say there is a um, gifted opportunity for trade for someone who is doing not yet at the level of doing pay or doesn't want to do pay, right? Sometimes you're like, I don't want to do pay because there's more expectations and obligations. Um, so they reach out and they're like, instead of saying, what's your budget for this scope of work? They reach out and they say, hey, we'd love to gift you um, a stay at this hotel. We'd love to include a hundred dollar food and beverage credit and a massage. Great. What are your expect expectations for this partnership? That is one of my favorite questions, even if you're getting paid, because that's when you learn a, all, like literally they're like, oh, okay. So we want a blog. We want a reel. We want you to do stories. Make sure you swipe up and link to this thing. We want five images that we can use um, and have a license and rights to for eternity, for digital advertising, media, print, all, all mediums, all types of media. Um, and you're like, wow, okay. That answer is no. In exchange for a hundred dollar food and beverage credit, credit and, you know, a massage, I'd be happy to offer you X because that is more aligned with the value of what you're asking me for. Something to keep in mind that my clients have run into before in the travel space is the, what we do find to be true is the lower paying partnerships tend to be needier and want more things always, right? They're like, we want four rounds of edits. And it's fine because I know that there are people when you're starting, you do it for not pay and that's fine. And that's how this works, but just be cognizant of that because you will have to be more particular about managing expectations and negotiating exclusivity rights, usage. Like what are you doing in exchange for it? Don't feel just because they're giving it to you for free. You have to do all the things that they're asking for. I've had a couple of clients, um, you know, get offered like a free hotel room or, or like they've reached out to who, you know, they're like, I'm going to this place, like any chance I can do an exchange and, you know, have a couple nights free. And the brand was like, oh, sure. The hotel was like, sure. In exchange for two nights, we'd love, you know, three in-feed posts, 10 story frames, one reel and a blog post. And it's like, when we do the math on that for, you know, for one client, it's like that may be $20,000 of value on their end for a $250 hotel room. So while it may seem nice to be like, oh, I didn't have to pay for this hotel, there does come a point when you're doing this for pay that you think, what is the value exchange of what I'm giving and what I'm getting? It doesn't, yes, that's relevant. You could do the math if you're getting paid, but even if you are gifting and doing something for trade, it, that principle still stands. Like you do not have to give away the farm. Do never agree to anything in perpetuity. Um, and just be, you know, controlled on like where your likeness is going, which is literally your face. Like you don't want them using picture, your pictures for print media, billboards, stuff like that. Oh, there we go. Okay. So I believe Annie said people are getting a recording of this, right? Maybe. I'm like, let me find my unmute button. Uh, I believe that, yes, they will send out a replay for those that couldn't be here and everybody else. So yes, there will be a replay available. Okay, cool. So everyone's here. Screenshot this page. These are questions. Like I literally, I don't anymore because I do this all the time. So like it just comes second nature. But for the longest time, I had them on a piece of paper literally next to my laptop. So anytime a brand reached out, I just went right to these questions. I still use them. I teach about them. I talk about them. How'd you hear about me? Scope of work. What are the campaign goals? What expectations do you have of me? What can you share about exclusivity? What do you need to know from me to move forward, right? They may, be, they may say, oh, we need to know like your audience insights. Um, what flexibility do you have? And then the best question, is there anything else I should know that I haven't asked yet? That's like a nice sort of catch-all. Screenshot this. Whether you're asking for $50,000 for a partnership or you're doing something for trade, all of these questions are relevant and all of these questions help you make sure that you are giving like fair value. Oh my God, I, I got to stop talking because I know we, we have so many questions. Um, this is a nice way to uh, say no if you don't want to like get egg on your face and you feel really bad. Um, so this is what I like, I use this all the time. Um, I've thought about this. I'm going to pass. Look forward to seeing touch. Good luck with the campaign. This is something else to screenshot. I use this. Very helpful. 
Um, okay, the last thing I'm gonna say, and then I leave time for questions. Um, when you are connecting with a brand, a hotel or an agency, and they reach out to you, or you're pitching, think about the person receiving it, right? Like, it's not about you. It is about you because they want to partner with you, but you want to know what it's, how it's beneficial to them. So think about that. Like when you are responding, what information would be helpful to them? It's not like I, I have all these followers and I know all these things, but if you say my community is, um, you know, made up of high income earning millennial couples who live in cities, live in major cities, and they love to travel internationally. And they're looking for places to go for girlfriend getaways, bachelorette parties, and destination weddings. Like the more, you know, your audience and you can share that information and say, they love content around X, Y, and Z. And when I do that sort of content on my Instagram, and you know, maybe you can send them some screenshots of different examples, like think about who's receiving it and what information makes you stand out there's a ton of noise in the space, right? There's just a ton of influencers. There's a ton of content creators. Um, so think about like, what makes you a little different? Like, how can you just dial in your audience a little bit more? I guarantee you, it will set you apart because not many people do it. Like literally a tiny percentage of people, they're all just like, oh yeah, I want a free hotel stay. Like, give it to me. Like I take beautiful pictures. Well, let's be honest. Everyone has a smartphone and everyone takes really nice pictures. So like, what makes you different? Um, okay, that's it. I'm going to stop. I'm leaving this up because if there's a follow-up question or about rates and you have a specific question about a rate, like you can slide into my DMs. I will happily just give you some quick feedback on like, yes, ask for that number or ask for this number. I'm going to stop. I have so many things to say about negotiation. Like I, I truly do love it. So uh, I'm going to pause and let Annie hit some, hit me with some questions. Oh my gosh. So much great information. Uh, I just dropped the links in the chat too, so that you can connect with Joanna and let's get to questions. We've got some, and I know, so we are going to, uh, run through these. Um, so first we have a question from Carrie. Do you feel that when working with DMOs or hotels, should we do it for a comp room or ticket first? Because getting paid to get experience I have done for products to product exchange, but not for travel destinations or hotels yet. Um, so Carrie, that's a great question. I'm sure a lot of people can relate to start asking for money, start flexing that muscle, right? Give yourself a number and just start asking for it. And maybe you're like, you know what? I would do this for trade. That's totally fine. But like, I'm going to ask for $500 or maybe you don't feel comfortable asking for money. And you want to build that muscle. I'm going to ask for the comp room and a $200 beverage credit, food and beverage credit. I'm going to ask for comp room and a free massage, like use it as leverage and strategy for the larger picture, which is building your brand and building your business. I love that. Just ask for the money. Just ask for the money. Yeah. Just, yep. That's literally like- I mean, the worst they could say is no, and then you can right. negotiate from there, right? Mm -hmm. I love that. Okay, uh, we got more questions coming in, but I'm gonna do my best to get through these. Okay, so this is one I'm sure we have all seen. Uh, Chelsea wants to know, how do you know if a company is legit, especially on Instagram? You know, we all get those random DMs like oh. be an ambassador, you know, or, you know, people probably get more legit ones. How do you know? Mm. If they're blowing you up on your Instagram um, and it just feels spammy, 99.9% .9 of the chance is going to be spam, right? I, I mean, dear Joanna, we love your content. Like I get that on TikTok and I'm like, I literally have like four views. Like you do not love my content on TikTok. Um, if it feels spammy, it is trust your gut. Um, anytime they're in your, uh, Instagram DMS. Great. Thanks for an email or, or sorry. Thanks for reaching out. Who is the person who manages your influencer partnerships? I'd love to connect with them via email, like get it off of Instagram and see if they actually send you someone. That's the first thing. Cause a lot of times they don't want to do the left and they just like spam you. And then they want to send you product. Um, ask around, obviously there's this community, which is great. There's a lot of other communities that are specifically like influence, like travel influencer ones. Um, just look around on, on Facebook is a great place. Um, connect with peers, you know, people that you follow that, you know, who do it for trade, 
you can always reach out and ask for them. Um, I would also go to that person, the, the company's Instagram page, go to the tagged photos and see if you know anyone who's in any of those tagged photos and then reach out to them and be like, is this real or like what's going on? Um, so it's trusting your gut, asking around, getting them off Instagram and getting them on email. Um, and then sometimes just doing a little Google. I think that's great advice. I love that. Okay, up next, Guillermo, we have two questions. I'm gonna save a second one for the end if we've got some extra time. Um, how do you dodge the, we don't usually pay, we invite you on the trip and that's it. So <clears throat> do you wanna dodge it because you don't wanna get, because you're doing everything for pay or why are we dodging this? Because I, I know this is like everyone, <clears throat> everyone gets hits with these and you think just because you're more successful, you don't get these free things sliding in. People always want you for free. Um, so are we dodging it because you only do pay? I know it's like- That's my guess is that, you know, yes, we're dodging yeah. because we want to get paid instead of yeah. we don't pay anyone. You just get to come on this free trip. Yeah. So a um, couple things. One, you can always say no. Like you're never going to be dodging them because like they'll never stop coming is what I'm trying to say. So just get used to saying no. Um, I will also say always have, often I talk to people and they're like, oh my God, this one partnership, you know, it's like very sort of blinders on. I would encourage you to take a, excuse me, step back. What are the expectations? Maybe this is a dream, a dream opportunity for you. And you're like, you know what? This is something that like would literally cost me so much money or I've been dying to make it or I can tag it on because I'm already in the area and I could go, you know, I can like, it's, it's an easier lift for me. Always ask what expectations of what they want. Never do it for free if they want all your images for likeness and marketing and all that. Um, but I would just say, think about, is there a way that you can leverage and be strategic about it? Maybe you cut down on their deliverables. Maybe you're like, oh my God, I've been trying to get in with this agency. This is content that like would, I would just crush it. Um, and you're like, it would be fantastic in my portfolio. It would help me get, you know, I'd probably get some followers from it. I could create some content that would get a lot of eyeballs. And then like, just if it helps you with your brand, like it's totally fine to say yes to something where you're not getting paid because it's beneficial to you and you're gonna like use it as a springboard. Um, but if you wanna dodge it, then just say, no, I, I you know, I, I say on behalf of my clients, um, we, you know, this is her full-time job. So she does get paid for her time and labor and her content creation. She does one trade partnership per quarter. Happy to consider this. And I'll let you know if this is something we want to move forward with. So that's the other way to say it. I love that. That's great. Okay. We got time. I'm going to throw one more question in here. And then I know you've got to go with the hour. So then we will finish this up. So Michelle asks, do you have any suggestions on what at the minimum a media kit needs to include? Ah, great question, Michelle. Yes. Um, no more than two pages. You want your brand name and your actual name. <laughs> like if you are not your brand, I've, I've looked at media kits and I'm like, literally what the hell is this person's name? Like I need to email them. And I'm like, who are you? So make sure you have your full name, a picture of you. You want this like literally in the top half, some picture of you, your logo, whatever you want to have, um, your social media links, like all those, you know, icons with, um, all the platforms website, you want all of them to be hyperlinked. So make this a PDF so that if I'm looking at the Instagram thing, I can click on it and it'll take me to your platform so I can see real time, what your numbers are and like kind of what's going on over there. You want to have a little blurb about your brand. It's not like, it's not your resume. I'm Johanna and I live in Denver and I have two dogs and I started my business 10 years ago. No, no, no. That's not relevant to you doing partnerships. If you're like, I'm Joanna and I lead a community of single women that are 40 and over who love to travel, have disposable incomes, love jet setting around the world for wine, luxury, and cool experiences like that. The brand is like, oh, those are my people, right? So you want to have it be descriptive of your community. Um, you want to have examples of past projects also hyperlinked to them. So this is literally just like a little photo clip. If you go to my website, joannaboss.com and on the talent page, I have profiles of all my talent. 
You can click on any one of them and download their media kit for examples. Obviously don't copy, but use it for inspiration and kind of just like visual guidance to what I'm talking about. Um, but have photos of past projects travel people like you and the food people I'm like you guys kill it with photos you have the most amazing photos use them to your advantage of putting you know putting those photos and then linking to like you know let's say you partnered with visit madrid visit madrid you got an amazing picture of you in spain and then when I click on the photo it takes me to the blog post you wrote or it takes me to a reel that went viral or a tiktok you know you just want a handful of those have your contact information your name your phone number, your email, you want it in the footer. So that way it repeats on every page. So that way sometimes, you know, again, this media kit is in a, is in a room. Someone prints it out. The pages get separated. Someone has one page, not the other page. You want them always to be able to contact you. Um, yeah, that's basically it as a start. I love that. That's super helpful. Okay. Question. Since there are a few questions we didn't get to, is it okay if they reach out to you and ask those? Yeah. Awesome. So Slide into my Instagram DMs. Um, just okay, mention, gonna... that, I mean, I will respond anyway, but just mention like, I'm from the Nomadic Network and you talk too much and I didn't have enough time for questions. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, this was packed full of great information. So I dropped Joanna's links. If we did not get to your question, seriously, reach out to her. Um, she is amazing and is going to give you that little bit of advice. And I have just a couple things to wrap up with before we say goodbye today so um hmm. joanna i'm going I'll to stop sharing yes no you're i think i can just kick you off <laughs> oh okay perfect okay now let me share this real quick 